Dancing Brave, and written by the tallest man in the race, uh, Alan Hill, all of six foot three. Well, we'll be back with more action from Aintree at four o'clock, but now it's time for the news and regional news. Your newsreader in London is Moira Stewart. From the newsroom, the main stories. Myra Hindley, the Moore's murderer, has been having lengthy interviews with her solicitor amid reports that she may confess to killing two more children. On Hindley's information, the police are still searching Saddleworth Moor. They say they now believe two more bodies are buried there. Greater Manchester Police resumed their search of the Moors earlier this week after Myra Hindley's second visit to the area carried out in total secrecy. The man in charge of the operation, Detective Chief Superintendent Peter Topping, says he's now certain bodies are buried near Shiny Brook, which is just on the Yorkshire side of the moor. Reports are coming in of two explosions at banks in the centre of Londonderry. It's believed that nobody is injured, but the area is sealed off. The army is investigating eight other bomb alerts in the city centre. Earlier today, two people were shot dead in Northern Ireland. In the village of Edeney, a soldier in the Ulster Defence Regiment was killed by three masked gunmen who ambushed his car as he arrived for work. Last night in North Belfast, a Catholic, Lawrence Marley, was murdered at the door of his house. He'd served two sentences for belonging to the IRA. The judge heading the inquiry into the Zeebrugge ferry disaster has begun planning his investigation. Mr Justice Sheen said the full hearing would start later this month. The main question would be why so many lives were lost so quickly. On Monday, an attempt will be made to pull the townsend Torreson ship upright. From Zeebrugge, Kate Aidy reports. With the fair weather holding, the writing operation should be relatively straightforward. In principle, heaving on one side of the ferry while hanging on to the other to ensure she doesn't slide along the seabed. And the next couple of days will see the awkward task of positioning the barges and floating cranes which will accomplish the writing. Two floating cranes, enormous gawky objects, are already alongside. Tomorrow's Grand National will have its hottest favourite for 11 years. West Tip, who won last year, is the shortest priced favourite since Red Rum in 1976. The Thinker, who won the Cheltenham Gold Cup last month, was second favourite, but was withdrawn this morning when the trainer said he wasn't fit enough for the National. The next news is on BBC One at 6 o'clock with Nicholas Witchell and Philip Hayton. <laughs> The poor southwest uh, got everybody's rainfall today, over two inches of rain in some places too, but it is now moving up into some other southern and eastern parts of England as well. That's where the rain is just at the moment. The rest of us, cloudy, windy uh, and cool too, uh, with just a little bit of sunshine in western parts of Scotland, most of us having dull conditions with a little bit of rain in places, nothing like as warm as it should be either, and pretty windy as you can see, this keen wind coming off the cold North Sea there. Tonight, well, some rain working its way northwards over the country, uh, but probably too much cloud and wind for any frost anywhere. Lowest temperatures about 4 Celsius, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And tomorrow, I'm afraid, looks like another cold and cloudy day with rain in places. This is BBC Two with News Northwest. Good afternoon to you. The Chief Constable of Greater Manchester, Mr James Anderton, and two senior detectives have won a High Court ruling which allows the quashing of private summonses against them. The summonses were issued at the request of Mrs Beryl Taylor, wife of the Manchester businessman Kevin Taylor. He's been the subject of police investigations. Mrs Taylor had alleged that the three policemen conspired to pervert the course of justice by giving false information to magistrates. There could now be an appeal to the House of Lords. Myra Hindley's solicitor has refused to discuss newspaper reports that she's confessed to two more child killings. The claim followed her recent visit to Saddleworth Moor near Oldham. The solicitor is expected to make another statement this afternoon. Meanwhile, police are continuing their search of the moors for clues to the disappearance of Pauline Reed and Keith Bennett, two children who vanished 20 years ago. Three people have been hurt in a disturbance at Quarry Bank Mill, the working museum run by the National Trust at Stile near Wilmslow. The trouble involved a group of youths carrying sticks. Three members of staff were treated in hospital. Six youths are helping police. 
Two Merseyside bus operators have lost a High Court claim that the local transport authority's maximum fare policy was illegal. Crosville Motors and the North Western Road Car Company argued that Merseyside Transport had breached the Transport Act by inhibiting competition and wrongly took into account social requirements when fixing fares on subsidised routes. Workers picketing a Merseyside animal foods factory after being sacked have won a court case against the firm. They claimed that during their 16-month picket of A1 food supplements in Bootle, they'd been threatened and intimidated by the company. Today, a Liverpool High Court judge awarded them an injunction against the firm. Five workers were also awarded agreed damages for assault. A man of 33 from Preston broke down in tears and was taken struggling from the dock today after being jailed for life. Robert Hodgson had to be dragged from the courtroom after admitting raping a woman in her home, indecently assaulting another woman and committing burglary. All the crimes were committed within 45 minutes. The judge at Preston Crown Court said as long as Hodgson was at liberty, he was a serious threat to women. Relatives were taken from the court by police when they shouted protests at the sentence. Now look at the region's weather. Although there will be a good deal of cloud this afternoon, some bright intervals will occur with a little hazy sunshine, mainly over Cumbria and the Isle of Man. This evening, outbreaks of rain will reach the south of the region, spreading slowly northwards, perhaps turning to sleet or snow over the Pennines. Maximum temperatures today, 9 Celsius, but feeling colder in the fresh to strong easterly winds. And well, that's it. Our next news from the region, BBC One, 6.35, Northwest Tonight, live from Aintree. This is BBC Two, where it's time to return to the turf with more racing from Aintree.